Hi, this video builds on the video Box Plots in R with T-Test, Mann Whitney, ANOVA and Kruskal Wallis, where I showed how to conduct the most important statistical tests and visualize them on top of informative box violin plots in a simple, intuitive R syntax. So let's get straight into it. Before using any function, we have to load the library which contains this function. For example, the ggstat plot package has the ggbetweenstats function, which we will use in order to produce our box plots. We'll use the tidyverse package for data manipulation and the introduction to statistical learning in R package for getting the data. So the data is which, and uh, if we have a look at this data, we'll see that it has 3000 observations. And our variable of interest is education. So we can have a look at the education and how many levels it has. It has five levels and a lot of observations in each of them. So I decided to reduce the number of observations per group or per level to 30. I also decided to reduce the number of levels to only three, so the plot looks more pleasant and understandable. So for, so for this, um, I took the wage data, just renamed it as D, and renamed the wage um, column to salary. Then I grouped by uh, the variable education and selected only 30 of the observations from each level. However, since sample n command would randomly select a new 30 observations every time we execute this command, we have to set c to some particular number. In this case, I have set it to 3. So you can execute the same code and get exactly the same result. Now we will filter out only three levels from the variable education. For this, I will simply copy paste these three levels in order to not to make any careless mistakes. In this way, we'll get exactly the same plot which we have seen in the video box plots in R. Now, if we select everything and execute one more time, we will rewrite our dataset D and uh, we'll have only 90 observations in it. Particularly, we will, we will have filtered out the category 2 and 4 from the educational variable. So let's produce the first plot with our GG between stats function. We only need three arguments for starters. Data, which is our D. Uh, we also need X argument, which is our variable education. And we need salary, which we put on the Y axis. And if we execute this code, we will get this plot. Here we see the Welsh ANOVA results with only 30 observations in every group and with a p values for pairwise comparisons, which were conducted by Games Hovel test, which you see on the bottom of the plot. To make the plot more readable, I usually like to write one argument per line. If you press stop, after the coma, you usually will be offered the next step, which even will be explained. Like in this case, we can choose between box violin or box violin plots, which is default. And if we choose only box, then the data will look like this. The next argument is the type of the statistics we do. We can do parametric, non-parametric, robust, or even biased statistics. We also can abbreviate them. So let's choose the non-parametric test, or better, parametric test, in order to show how can we choose the variance um, argument, which will be the next. The variance equal argument will allow us to um, choose between Welsh or T-test, or Welsh ANOVA and Fisher ANOVA. Uh, so if we choose this argument as true, our 
Welsh ANOVA will change to Fisher's ANOVA, you see here. We also can change the p-value adjustment for pairwise comparisons uh, to another method, for example, to the uh, well-known Bonferroni method. And if we execute this code, we will get only one significant result instead of three, because the Bonferroni method is more conservative than whole correction method. Um, another argument uh, which is really useful is the pairwise display. It allows you to show the significant results or only not significant results or even all results. But by default, uh, only significant results are shown. However, uh, using this argument, we can change it. So if we write pairwise display not significant, we will get this result which shows two non-significant p-values for pairwise comparisons. However, let's get rid of the Bonferroni method, let's uh, display only significant results and uh, look again at the uh, p-adjust methods. My favorite p-adjust method is the Benjaminian Hochberg, this one. And it's exactly the same as the FDR uh, method which means false discovery rate. You can also choose not to adjust for multiple co comparisons at all. But in our case, we would do this. And if we execute the false discovery rate um, multiple comparisons, we will get the three significant differences. Now, let's get rid of this uh, line of code and use the default box violent plots, which will show us the distribution. And let's get rid of the bias factor message, which only used by the parametric tests. If we just write bias factor message false, we'll get rid of it. In the previous video, we also checked the assumptions for this data and showed that this uh, part is not normally distributed. So you, we have to use the non-parametric test in order to be able to compare these groups correctly. You see that the uh, fischer sanova changed to Kruskal-Wallis and we use the Dune tests, pairwise test by default. We also can change names of the axes, of course, by simply writing down what we want on this axis, let's say salary in thousands of dollars. And since we have a non-parametric test, we can display notches, which are supposed to compare groups. And if the notches do not overlap, it's usually uh, mean that there is a significant difference. The notches are calculated with this formula, and they give us roughly 95% confidence intervals for comparing the medians. Here we can see the notches, uh, but sometimes they are really hard to say, so we can play with them and display them more clearly by making them a bit bigger and a bit more present, like here. If we want to make our plot a bit cleaner and more minimalistic, we can get rid of the red dots or means with uh, their descriptions, or uh, vice versa, we can make our plot more informative by not only displaying the means, but also displaying their confidence intervals. Sometimes we can combine both by displaying uh, a lot of information but reducing the number of decimal points after the mean, for example. Another cool thing about this package is that it is built on ggplot2 package, which is very famously powerful. And if you already know this, you can use the arguments from GG uh, ggplot package, for example, theme classic, uh, inside of this function ggbetweenstats. Here we see that theme classic made the plot even cleaner, but it uh, moved the legend to the right. So we want to use the argument legend position and move the legend back to the top. 
Moreover, having this nice plot with a lot of statistics, we can put even more statistics on top of it. For example, we can display means and confidence um, intervals calculated by the Bayesian non-parametric bootstrap uh, simply on top of the existing plot. We only use the arrow bars argument and here we go, we have our arrow bars. They look horrible though, so we can adjust them, make them a bit uh, tighter and uh, maybe change the color so we can see them uh, clearly on the plot. Let's use, um, let's say, blue color. In this case, we would have two different kinds of confidence intervals, which we can clearly differentiate. Uh, the blue confidence intervals would be for the mean, and the um, notched confidence intervals would be for the median. Then we can declutter the plot a bit by removing the numbers uh, of means and its confidence intervals, and removing this fat red point and instead of it making a small blue point which would uh, perfectly fit our blue confidence intervals for the mean. For this, for this point, we also use the mean CL boot function, which makes a non-parametric bootstrap, and as an argument just say point and set of arrow bars. We also display the color, we say blue, and voila, we have our beautiful confidence interval. The last thing we have to do, or we can do, is just to save the plot. We just name it somehow and use either the PNG extension or JPEG. It can save TIFF, ASP, whatever you want, and just save this plot. And if we have a look at this plot, we'll see a beautiful plot with a lot of statistical details, particularly the crucial Wallace analysis with the pairwise comparisons, and these pairwise comparisons are um, p-value corrected with the false discovery rate. We also have the box violent plots which display two kinds of confidence intervals and the violent plots themselves which display the distribution and all the other stuff you have uh, probably already seen in my two previous videos. One on the box plots, all you need to know, and another on the box plots in R. So, if you found any value in this video at all, please consider to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And please let me know whether this format of video demo in R, which is kind of rough and quick, but uh, at the same time very practical and down to earth, was useful for you and I should do more. And as always, thanks for learning. Cheers guys!